Hey guys, welcome back to Cyber Platter. Today we'll discuss Azure scenario based interview question and answers. This is part one as in when we complete the other parts, we'll add it in the description box. First question, an organization is planning to migrate its on premises data center to Azure. How would you design the uh, Azure virtual network architecture to ensure optimal performance, scalability and security. Consider the connectivity between on premises and Azure as well as communication between different Azure regions. So designing the virtual Azure virtual network architecture for optimal performance, scalability and security involves careful planning and considerations of various components. Let's see some of the key steps and considerations First, let's discuss network topology. Plan your virtual network topology carefully. Consider using multiple subnets to organize resources logically. Also use separate subnets for different tiers of your application like for example web app database this is to enhance security consider using azure bastion for a secure rdp and ssh connectivity to virtual machines without exposing public ips next consideration is connectivity between on premises and azure use azure express route or vpn gateway to establish connectivity between your on premises data center and azure express route provides dedicated private connection with higher reliability and low latency compared to vpn implement redundant connections for high availability next consideration is azure firewalls and network security groups nsgs deploy azure firewalls to filter traffic and protect your virtual network use nsgs to control inbound and outbound traffic at the subnet and NIC NIC that is network interference card level regularly review and update NSG rules based on security requirements next consideration scalability use Azure virtual van for large scale global connectivity leverage Azure load balancer for distributing incoming network traffic across multiple servers to ensure scalability and high availability next consideration traffic routing and load balancing implement Azure traffic manager for global load balancing across multiple Azure regions use Azure load balancer for distributing traffic within a region utilize Azure application gateway for application application level routing and load balancing next consideration high availability leverage availability sets or zones for increased fault tolerance within a region use traffic manager or geo redundant storage for cross region redundancy and high availability next consideration performance optimization use azure virtual network peering for efficient communication between virtual networks within the same region utilize azure cdn that is content delivery network for caching and delivering content closer to your users implement azure front door for global load balancing and enhance security if you want to know what are these terms if it is too difficult for you guys i will add another video which talks about all these terms so you can go through that video first and and then this next consideration monitoring and logging implement azure monitor or microsoft defender for cloud for continuous monitoring of network performance and security enable diagnostic logs for azure resources to capture detailed information for troubleshooting next consideration compliance and governance ensure compliance with industry standards and regulatory requirements implement azure policy to enforce organizational standards and governance next consideration documentation and best practices document your virtual network architecture and configurations follow azure networking best practices and regularly update configurations based on evolving requirements 
So by carefully planning and implementing these considerations, you can design an Azure virtual network architecture that meets your organization's performance, scalability, and security needs for on-premises to Azure connectivity and communication between different Azure regions. Let's go to the next question. A critical application requires high availability and automate automatic scaling. How would you design an architecture using Azure virtual machine skill sets to handle fluctuations in demand. Include considerations for load balancing and auto scaling policies. Let's see a step by step guide to this. First, define application architecture. Design your application to be stateless so that new instances can be easily added or removed without impacting the overall system. Next consideration. Create a virtual machine scale set, that is VMSS. Deploy your application in a VMSS. Virtual machine scale set allows you to centrally manage, configure, and update a large number of VMs. Next consideration is load balancing. Use Azure load balancer to distribute incoming traffic across multiple instances of your application. Configure, configure the load balancer to use the appropriate health probes to monitor the instances and route traffic only to healthy instances. Next, availability sets. Place your VMSS instances in different availability sets to ensure that they are distributed across multiple fault domains and update domains. This provides high availability. Next consideration, auto scaling policies. Set up auto scaling policies to handle fluctuations in demand. Define rules based on metrics such as CPU utilization or other custom metrics relevant to your application. Specify minimum and maximum instance counts to control the scale out and scale in behavior. Configure cool down periods to prevent rapid scaling actions that might lead to instability. Next consideration, scaling in and scaling out. When demand increases, the auto scaling policies should trigger the addition of new instances, that is scaling out. When the demand decreases, the auto scaling policies should scale in by removing instances that are no longer needed. Next consideration, managed disks. Use managed disks for your or VMSS instances to simplify disk management and ensure data uh, durability. Next, monitoring and alerts. Implement Azure Monitor and set up alerts to notify you of any issues or when auto scaling events occur. Monitor key performance metrics such as uh, CPU usage, memory utilization, and network traffic. Next, application gateway. This is optional. So if your application requires advanced load balancing capabilities, consider using Azure application gateway. It provides additional features such as SSL termination, URL based routing and web application firewall. Next, custom scripts and extensions. Use custom scripts or extensions to automate configuration tasks during VMSS uh, deployment. Leverage Azure custom script extension or desired state configuration DSC to customize VM instances. Next, update management. Implement Azure update management to automate the patching and update process for the VMSS instances, ensuring they are running the latest software. Next, network considerations. Configure network security groups, NSGs, and virtual network settings appropriately. Consider using Azure Application Gateway or Azure Front Door for additional application level routing and load balancing. Next, implement a backup and disaster recovery strategy for critical data and configurations. Next, Regularly test your auto scaling setup to ensure that it responds effectively to changes in demand. Next, document 
the architecture configurations and procedures for future reference and troubleshooting so by following these steps you can design an azure virtual machine scale sets architecture that ensures high availability and automatic scaling allowing your critical application to handle fluctuations in demand efficiently regularly review and update your configurations based on changes in application uh, requirements and usage patterns next question a company needs a cost effective solution for archiving large amounts of infrequently accessed data propose an architecture using a your blob storage including considerations for access tiers and life cycle management first create an azure storage account with the appropriate redundancy level based on your durability and availability requirements like lrs uh, that is locally redundant storage then grs geo redundant storage or ra grs that is read access geo redundant storage next organize your data by creating specific blob containers within the storage account for different types of archive data next is access tiers utilize uh, azure blob storages access tiers to manage costs based on the frequency of access to your data there are uh, two primary access tiers first one is hot access tier and the next one is cool access tier so hot access tier is for frequently accessed data it has higher storage costs but lower access costs and cool access tier is for infrequently accessed data with lower storage costs but higher access costs next consideration is life cycle management implement azure blob storage life cycle management policies to automate the transition of data between access tiers and control data retention define rules to move data to the cool access tier after a specified period of inactivity and to the archive access tier after a longer duration next is archive access tier leverage archive access tier for data that is rarely or never accessed this tier offers the lowest storage costs but incurs retrieval costs and higher latency when accessing data consider the expected retrieval patterns and the potential delay in accessing data from the archive access tier next consideration access control implement secure access control by using sas that is shared access signatures or azure active directory's uh, authentication azure active directory is now called as microsoft entra id next consideration monitoring and logging enable azure storage analytics to monitor and log storage metrics allowing you to track access patterns analyze costs and optimize your storage usage next data validation and integrity implement data validation mechanisms to ensure data integrity during archiving and retrieval processes regularly perform data integrity checks to identify and address any potential issues next retention policies define and enforce data retention policies to comply with regulatory requirements or organizational policies for data archiving next data compression and encryption consider compressing data before archiving this is to reduce storage costs further enable encryption at rest to secure data stored in azure blob storage next consider implementing additional backups and replication strategies for critical archive data to protect against accidental deletion or data corruption next cost monitoring and optimization regularly review storage costs and usage patterns to optimize storage configurations and adjust access tiers based on changing requirements next 
document, the storage architecture, access tier policies and any other relevant configurations for future reference and maintenance. So by implementing this architecture, you can create a cost effective solution for archiving large amounts of infrequently accessed data in Azure blob storage while maintaining flexibility, security and compliance with your organization's requirements. Regularly review and adjust access tiers and lifecycle management policies based on changing data access patterns and business needs. Let's go to the next question. An organization is migrating its containerized application to Azure Kubernetes service that is AKS discuss the considerations for networking security scalability in the AKS cluster include topics such as network policies and pod identity first let's talk about networking in this there is Azure Virtual Network Integration. So integrate AKS with an uh, Azure Virtual Network to enable communication with Azure, other Azure resources securely. Leverage Azure CNI, that is Container Network Interface for Network Plugin to enable each pod to have its own IP address within the Azure Virtual Network. Next is Subnet Configuration. Design the subnet structure within the virtual network to accommodate AKS nodes and other resources. Consider subnet size based on the expected number of nodes and pods in the AKS cluster. Next, Service Endpoint and private link. Use Azure service endpoints to secure Azure services such as Azure storage or Azure SQL database by res restricting access to resources only from AKS. Implement Azure private link to securely access services over a private connection. Next consideration in networking is network policies. Implement Kubernetes network policies to control the communication between pods within the AKS cluster. Define and enforce policies to segment and secure traffic between different parts of the application. So this is about networking. Next, we'll talk about security. In security, the first consideration is role-based access control, that is RBAC. Utilize RBAC to control access to the AKS cluster resources. Assign roles with the principle of least privilege to ensure that users and applications have only the necessary permissions. Next consideration is Microsoft Entra ID integration, previously called as Azure AD. So integrate AKS with Azure Active Directory for user authentication and authorization. Enable Azure AD based RBAC to manage access using Azure AD identities. Next, pod identity. Consider using Azure AD pod identity to provide a secure way for applications running in AKS to access Azure services without embedding credentials in the application code. Enable managed identities for AKS nodes to allow them to access Azure services securely. Next, Azure policy and Microsoft Defender for cloud. Implement Azure policy to enforce organizational standards and governance within AKS. You can also leverage Microsoft Defender for cloud to monitor and uh, respond to security threats. Uh, Microsoft Defender for Cloud was previously called as Azure Security Center. Next, Container Image Security. Regularly scan and update container images to ensure that they don't contain uh, known vulnerabilities. Use Azure Container Registry for secure storage and management of container images. So this is about security. Next, we will talk about scalability. In this, the first consideration is node pools. Design multiple node pools with varying VM sizes to accommodate different types of workloads. Consider using virtual machine scale sets for automatic scaling based on demand. Next one is horizontal pod auto scaling that is HPA. Implement HPA to automatically adjust the number of pods in a deployment based on observed CPU utilization or custom metrics. Scale out and in dynamically to handle varying workloads. 
Next is cluster auto scaler. Enable the AKS cluster auto scaler to automatically adjust the number of nodes in the cluster based on the demand for resources. Ensure proper configurations for minimum and maximum node counts. Next, resource quotas and limit limits. Define resource quotas and limits for namespaces to prevent resource exhaustion and ensure fair resource allocation among applications. Next, monitoring and logging. Set up monitoring using Azure Monitor to collect and analyze telemetry data from AKS. Utilize Azure Log Analytics for uh, centralized logging and troubleshooting. Next, backup and disaster recovery. Implement backup strategies for critical configurations and data. Plan for disaster recovery scenarios to minimize downtime in case of failures. So by addressing these considerations, organizations can ensure a well-architectured and secure AKS cluster that is optimized for networking, security, and scalability when migrating containerized applications to Azure. Regularly review and update configurations based on evolving application requirements and best practices. Let's go to the next question. A development team is adopting a microservices architecture and each microservice is deployed as a container. How would you design a CI CD pipeline using Azure DevOps to automate the uh, deployment of these containers to Azure Kubernetes Services AKS? Let's see. A general outline for creating a CI CD pipeline using Azure DevOps. First is source code management. Use a version control system like Git to manage your microservices source code. And then create an Azure DevOps project and link it to your Git repository. Next, create a service connection in Azure DevOps to securely connect to your AKS cluster. Next is infrastructure as code IAC. Use tools like Helm or Kubernetes manifests to define the AKS cluster infrastructure as code. Store the IAC scripts in the version control system. Next, build pipeline. Configure a build pipeline to build Docker images for each microservice. Use a Docker file in each microservice repository. Publish the built Docker images to a container registry such as Azure Container Registry or ACR. Next, automated tests. Integrate automated tests into the build pipeline to validate the microservices. Include unit tests, integration tests, and any other relevant tests for your microservices. Next, artifact versioning. Use versioning for your Docker images to uniquely identify each build. Include the version information in the container registry. Next, Release pipeline. Create a release pipeline to deploy microservices to the AKS cluster. Define stages for different environments, like for example, development, staging, production. Next, environmental variables and secrets. Use Azure DevOps variable groups or AKS secrets to manage environment specific configuration settings. Next, Deploy to AKS. Use Kubernetes deployment YAML files or Helm charts in the uh, release pipeline. Deploy microservices to the AKS cluster using kubectl or Helm tasks. Implement rolling updates to minimize downtime during deployments. Next, integration tests. This is optional. If needed, include post-deployment integration tests in the release pipeline to validate the application's behavior in the AKS environment. Next, manual approval gates. This is also optional. Consider adding manual approval gates for critical environments to ensure a controlled deployment process. Next, rollback mechanism. Implement a rollback mechanism in case of deployment failures. Use Helm rollbacks or kubectl to revert to the previous state. Next, monitoring and logging integration. Integrate monitoring tools such as Azure Monitor to track the performance of deployed microservices. Use Azure Log Analytics or other logging solutions for centralized logging. Next, Security scanning. Consider integrating container security scanning tools to analyze container images for vulnerabilities. Next, 
notifications and reporting configure notifications for successful or failed deployments use azure devops dashboards or reporting tools to track pipeline status and metrics next document the ci cd pipeline configuration including pipeline triggers stages and deployment procedures so these are the ci cd pipeline steps now we'll talk about the best practices first implement iac infrastructure as code for aks and other uh, infrastructure components use azure key vault for managing sensitive information like secrets and api keys next leverage azure devops variable groups for shared configuration across pipelines next implement a branching strategy for example git flow to manage feature development releases and hot fixes next regularly update dependencies and ensure the pipeline adheres to the principle of least privilege next store pipeline configurations as code within the source code repository so by following these steps and best practices you can design a robust ci cd pipeline for deploying microservices as containers to azure uh, kubernetes service using azure devops adjust the pipeline based on specific project requirements and evolving best practices in the devops and container orchestration space let's go to the next question an organization needs to secure communication between uh, azure virtual machines discuss the use of azure network security groups nsgs and azure application security groups asgs to control traffic and implement micro segmentation so azure network security groups nsgs and application uh, security groups asgs are key components for securing communication between azure virtual machines vms and implementing micro uh, segmentation now let's see a breakdown of their roles and how they can be used first we'll talk about nsgs so nsgs are layer 4 stateful packet filters uh, layer 4 includes tcp udp icmp so they allow or deny traffic to and from azure resources such as virtual machines next nsgs consist of inbound and outbound security rules inbound rules control incoming traffic to azure resources while outbound rules control outgoing traffic from azure resources NSGs can filter traffic based on source and destination IP addresses, source and destination port ranges and protocols. This helps in restricting or allowing specific types of traffic. NSGs follow a default deny model, meaning that all inbound and outbound traffic is denied by default unless explicitly allowed by rules. Rules have a priority order and the first rule that matches the traffic is applied. Lower the priority number, higher is the priority now let's talk about azure application security groups asgs asgs are an abstraction that enables you to group vms based on their roles or functions you can uh, associate nsg rules with asg tags this is to simplify the management of security rules for vms with similar roles asgs allow you to apply security rules based on the role of uh, vms rather than specifying ip addresses individually for example you can create a asg uh, for web servers and associated with nsg rules allowing http and https traffic asgs simplify the management of nsg rules by allowing you to associate a single rule with multiple vms based on their groupings asg memberships are dynamic meaning vms can be added or removed from an asg without requiring rule updates now we will consider implementing micro segmentation first define security groups identify the different roles or functions of your vms for example web servers application servers and database servers 
Next, create ASGs for each identified role and add the respective VMs to each ASG. Next, create NSG rules for each role or function based on the ASGs. For example, create NSG rules allowing web traffic only for VMs in the web server's ASG. Next, associate the NSGs with the subnets where the VMs are deployed. Ensure that each subnet has the appropriate NSGs to enforce micro-segmentation. Next, regularly review and refine NSG rules as the environment evolves. Adjust ASG memberships or create new ASGs as needed for changes in VM roles. Next, establish clear naming conventions for NSGs, ASGs and rules to enhance manageability and documentation. Next, implement monitoring and auditing for NSGs to track changes and identify potential security issues. Use Azure Monitor and Microsoft Defender for Cloud for enhanced visibility. So by leveraging Azure NSGs and ASGs, organizations can implement micro-segmentation to control traffic between virtual machines based on their roles and functions. This approach enhances security by reducing attack surface and simplifies rule management in dynamic environments. Regularly review and update security groups and rules to adapt to changing requirements and ensure a secure network architecture. Let's go to the next question. You are tasked with designing a backup strategy for critical databases hosted on Azure SQL database. Discuss the options available for backup and recovery, including long-term retention and geo-restore capabilities. First, let's talk about backup and recovery options. In this first, we have automated backups. Azure SQL database automatically performs regular, full, differential, and transaction log backups. Point-in-time restore capabilities allow you to restore a database to any point within the retention period. Next, database copy. Create database copies that serve as read-only replicas. These copies can be used for reporting or as a backup source. Next, geo-replication. Enable geo-replication to create readable secondary databases in different Azure regions. Geo-replication serves as disaster recovery option and allows you to perform read scale operations on secondary databases. Next topic is long-term retention. In this, the first one is Azure Backup. Use Azure Backup to extend the retention period beyond the automatic backups provided by uh, Azure SQL database. If I'm not wrong, Azure Backup allows you to keep backups for up to 10 years. Next, Geo Backup Storage. Store long-term backups in a geographically redundant storage account to enhance data durability. Next topic is Geo Restore Capabilities. In this first one is Geo Restore. Leverage the Geo Restore feature to restore a database to a different Azure region. This capability is valuable for disaster recovery scenarios or when you need to move the database closer to a different set of users. Next point point in time restore across regions. Geo Restore allows point in time restore across regions, providing flexibility in choosing the restore point. Now let's talk about some considerations and best practices. First is RTO and RPO. RTO stands for Recovery Time Objective and RPO stands for Recovery Point Objective. Define your RTO and RPO to uh, determine the frequency of backups and the acceptable downtime during a restore operation. Next, SLA Service Level Agreement. Understand the SLA for automated backups provided by Azure SQL Database. Factor this SLA into your overall backup strategy. Next, testing and validation. Regularly test the backup and restore processes to ensure they meet your recovery objectives. Validate geo-restore capabilities to ensure readiness for disaster recovery scenarios. Next, 
monitoring and alerts. Set up monitoring and alerts to be notified of backup failures or issues. Monitor storage utilization to avoid running out of storage for backups. Next, automated scripting. Consider using automated scripts or Azure PowerShell to schedule and manage backup and restore operations automatically. Next, data classification and security. Classify and secure your data based on sensitivity levels. Implement encryption for backups to protect sensitive data. Next, documentation. Document the backup and recovery procedures, including steps for both automated and manual processes. Include information about how to perform geo restore operations. Next, compliance. Ensure that your backup strategy complies with any industry specific or regulatory compliance requirements applicable to your organization. So by incorporating these options and considerations into your backup strategy, you can design a resilient and effective approach for safeguarding critical databases hosted on Azure SQL database. Regularly review and update these strategies based on changing business requirements and evolving uh, best practices. So that's it for today, guys. Uh, if you like today's video, please share, like and subscribe to our channel. That will help us a lot. I will see you in the next video with more questions, uh, scenario based questions on Azure.